Good evening and a warm welcome to Empowering You for Victory. We've had an amazing weekend. I trust you've been blessed with the services and we are having an amazing week ahead. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Moan and I send our fondest love greetings to every one of you. Tonight, family, I want to continue from what I was sharing with you on Friday that mature sons know and operate the mental laws of success. We've been sharing with you that there are a number of different laws. There are spiritual laws, there are mental laws, there are laws in the universe like the law of gravity, the law of flight, and then there are laws in governments and constitutions in the nations of the world. If you violate any of these laws, it has devastating results in your life. But if you work with the laws and principles, they will enhance your life. There is the person of our Lord Jesus Christ who is in our hearts, who helps us to live a godly life. We are in union with Christ, but they are the principles of Christ, the principles, the laws of the kingdom, that God will empower you, that you through faith will live by them. I want to read in Colossians chapter 3, verse 2, set your mind on things above not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. Praise God for the reading of his word. Your mind has got the ability to be set. You set that from your will. You make a choice. You make a quality decision. In the same way outward you use a computer. The word gigo, G-I-G-O, garbage in, garbage out. It applies to this computer too. If you put garbage in, you get garbage out. You can set your mind so that you are living in the way you think from the throne above. And then we shared with you that the first law of the mind is the law of control. We shared with you that you controlling your life is not in your own strength. You're not a law unto yourself. It is you receiving the abundance of grace, the gift of righteousness, and through Jesus Christ within you, through this life of faith, living in union with God, you rule in life. You are called to be a king in life. You are called to rule over the flesh. You are called to rule over the devil. And you are called to rule over the world. Romans 5, 17, For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive the abundance Abundance of grace, that's you got to receive that abundance of grace. you got to receive this gift of righteousness. And then through receiving that, you reign, you rule in life, but it's through our Lord Jesus Christ. We shared with you the second law is the law of cause and effect. Paul said in Galatians 6, Galatians 6 verse 7 and 8, be not deceived. God is not mocked. That means when you deceived God, you thinking God is mocked. No, be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth. Whatsoever. Whatsoever. It's not just word seed. It's not just money seed. Whatever you do is a seed. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he reap. The only difference is when you reap, you reap much more than you sowed. For he that sowed to the flesh, you reap corruption from that flesh, a low life. If you're sowing 
and doing things in a low life, you reap corruption from a low life. But if you sow to the spirit a high life, you from a high life reap that abundant harvest. And so you do reap what you sow. And then number three is the law of belief. I'm not talking about faith from your heart now. I'm talking about just believing in your unconscious mind. Because there are programs in your unconscious mind that you have got from your parenting. And your beliefs in your unconscious mind are the ultimate veils over your spirit life. If you have negative beliefs in your unconscious mind, you are hindering your spirit man created in the image of God to actually do great exploits in the kingdom and for the kingdom. And so, 46 years ago, I got saved on John 3, 16. That golden text of the Bible, it is so precious. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. My brother-in-law in my lounge asked me, to read that from the Bible. Then he asked me, do you understand it? I said, I don't understand it. You see, I had a mental block in my mind. I couldn't believe that God loves me so much that the reason Jesus Christ went to the cross, it was God sending him to the cross because of how much he loved me. And if I could believe that, I could receive God's life. So he said, let us pray, and we prayed, and the Holy Spirit worked on my unconscious mind. And when I read it, it was like John 3, 16 leapt out of the Bible, and I felt I could believe it, because there was an activity of something got erased from my unconscious mind, and now I could believe and I believe the love that God has for me, that God gave me, sent his son to the cross to die for my sin. He gave his only begotten son, that whosoever, whosoever includes you, includes anyone in the world, whosoever is me, whosoever is you, whosoever believeth, in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That night in my lounge, I was born again because I believed in Jesus. Now, you, there's all different types of beliefs. It's what you believe about success. It's what you believe about money. If you grew up in a home that always spoke negative about rich people, it'll affect your belief. If you believed, if your parents always said rich people are evil people, that's what you believe. It's in your unconscious mind. If your parents always said to you, do you think money grows on the trees? You thought getting money is such a hard thing in life. That's what you believe. And what you believe in life is what you receive. What you believe is what you're going to get. If you do not like what you're getting in that area of your life, you must change what you believe in that area of your life. Matthew 8, 13, Jesus said to a centurion, and Jesus said unto the centurion, Go thy way, as thou hast believed, so be done unto you. And his servant was healed, the south some day. Now I'll give you a little bit of a backdrop. This centurion was not a Jew, was somebody from Rome. So he was not a believer. And but he came to Jesus because his servant was sick to the point of death. 
And Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. Why? Because his disciples said, this man built a synagogue. And this man loved the nation of Israel. And so they influenced Jesus because of his good deeds. I'm not suggesting to you good deeds can influence Jesus. Faith influenced Jesus. But that's what the Bible records. So Jesus said to this man, I'll come home and heal him. And this man turned around and said to Jesus, you don't come to my home. I'm not worthy that you should come under my covering, my roof. You know, I'm not worthy that you should come under Caesar, the government of Rome. Just where you are. If you speak the word only, my servant will be healed. And Jesus marveled. He said, I've not found such great faith. No, not in all Israel. And this was from an unbeliever. It is so sad to see unbelievers successful because they are thinking right and believing right. And Christians who have Jesus in their heart are limited by their past beliefs. And so Jesus says, he didn't go to his home. He, had, he believed that Jesus just speaks a word. And another day we'll explain what that means. The law of belief says whatever you believe with emotions becomes your reality. Whatever you believe with strong emotions, it does become your reality. The more intense you believe something to be true, the more likely it will affect you. Your beliefs are what actually creates your facts. So family, today, understand there are mental laws of success. The first law we shared with you is the law of control. You must have control over your life through grace and righteousness and through Jesus Christ. Then the second law of control that you have in your life is a law of cause and effect. You're going to have to choose the right causes to get the right effects. Nothing, nothing just happens. There is no causeless curse in the earth. That's what Proverbs says. There's no such a thing as a causeless curse. And then number three, the law of beliefs. And tomorrow we will continue to share with you powerful mental laws that can enhance your life. So God richly, richly bless you and thank you for tuning in and being online and being empowered so you can change from victimhood to empowerment to enlightenment. It's very important that the darkness in your mind gets driven out by the light of God. God richly bless you. Allow me to pray for you. Father, your word declares that the God who said, let there be light shining out of darkness had shone in our hearts and minds that we would give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. I pray today that the words I've spoken to your people will be a lamp unto their feet and a light unto their pathway. And we want to thank you, Lord, that the Holy Spirit is the after teacher guiding us and leading us in the ways of life. Your word says you will show us the path of life for in your presence is fullness of joy. And your right hand, at your right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. I release the fullness of joy upon your people. And I release eternal pleasures that come from thinking above in Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen. God richly bless you. I'll see you tomorrow at 7 o'clock. Bye-bye. 